Hi, Martin. You're all right? Yeah, I'm really good. Thanks. It's good to be here. Um, so today we're going to talk about marketing planning. Um, so planning can sometimes be seen as a really boring part because it's putting bits in place. Um, but without a structured plan, um, you can't tell whether whatever marketing campaign you come up with um, is going to come off. Um, without the plan, you can't spot uh, where weaknesses were, when things went right, when things went wrong. And you can't measure it afterwards either because you don't really know what you did. You just kind of got up that morning with a blank bit of paper and did something random. Um, and a lot, if you end up doing a lot of random acts, they don't really all come together. And, and it's really difficult to repeat that and get some um, positive learning from that. Um, so today I'm going to go through marketing planning um, and we're going to use a, a hypothetical event, which is actually quite pertinent to you, Martin. Um, it's, um, it's just a kind of a, a, a broad outline of a hypothetical event and what you should do, um, what potential routes can be gone down at each stage to, to ensure that it comes off and to ensure you get correct planning. So if you've got any questions at any point, Martin, just ask and, uh, and we can yeah. take it from there. Cool. Sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share screen and I'm going to nip to a pre-prepared Excel sheet that we have for this hypothetical event. So, Martin, can you see the spreadsheet? I can, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, um, this is just a, a very straightforward one, and we've not put any dates in there. We've just kind of kept it to weeks. So, the top line just kind of numbers weeks up until the event, whatever that's going to be, which is in red. Is the event's going to be in, in week eight. And I've split this sheet down to different uh, sections, so assets, um, things for pre-event and things for post-event. Now this event could be anything and the time frame uh, will uh, grow or change depending on what the event is and what needs to go into it. Obviously, if you're just doing something like a webinar like today, that leads slightly less preparation than uh, a huge exhibition you might be doing. Um, the example that I'm using here is could potentially be something like a, like a real world uh, event, so a workshop, a masterclass, or or um, or some sort of get together that's, that's useful for your business or organisation. So we put that in in week eight, and the reason putting it that kind of or at least two months out is the fact that, as you can see, there's quite a lot of things to to prepare in terms of assets and pre-event before we do that, and also um, in a, in an event situation you're relying on, on other people making time in their diary so they're going to need an amount of time to ensure that they can fit in to come to your event. Um, just because we're doing an event on this one, um, this could also be a product launch, it could be um, a, a, something, something new that's happening in the business, um, it could be a whole range of things but we're going to, I'm going to use an event as a typical example because it's quite easy to get, get your head around what's going to happen. So looking at the assets that need creating for an event, obviously there's copy. So, um, and we can actually, I am actually change that. I'm going to update that to copy stroke idea. Because if you don't have an idea, um, then the rest of it's all going to fall flat. Key to the idea is knowing who you're wanting to come to this event. So who's your ideal customer? Who's your ideal partner? Who are you trying to attract? So there's a, there's a whole planning element around that in seeing, okay, so, um, let's identify who these people are, let's identify their pain points and how does whatever we're going to do so that our event in this case help them solve their pain points and in an ideal world if this is an event get them to come to your event and then the ideal thing will be to get them to hire you for, for your services after the event. So it's really key to come up with um, a, a really good idea and also identify who the market is because you come up with an idea but if it's not stratified around a set of people and what kind of problems you could solve for them then it's going to fall it's going to fall flat on its face mm. so in terms of those sections is there a bit of a pattern then to the ordering and sequencing and how many slots you would allocate to each of them um potentially yeah i mean the copy stroke idea is the key thing because by getting a by getting a good idea and a copy is the, the best way to kind of articulate what it is you want to achieve. And from coming up with a copy in the idea, then the rest of these elements can start to fall out. So from coming up with a good idea, um, that might get, that's going to give you kind of lift off uh, 
for photographs and graphics and videos and for the hashtags as well. So all these elements start to um, fuel the rest of the experience. Mm. So without coming up with a, a kind of a, a strong copy idea, um, which you also I can also I'm going to call that a, well, I'm also going to call it a brief, which is kind of a, a, a bit more a bit more structured. So the brief will have all the other elements in it. So it'll have for this event, it's going to have um, the date and time the venue um what's to be achieved and maybe other things that are needed throughout the throughout it as well again this is this is a an atypical um example so this might involve right we need to get a project we need to get some um audio visual equipment we might need to ensure we've hired hiding catering we might need to ensure we've we've got a videographer we might need to ensure that we've got guest speakers so this is this is quite a vanilla list but obviously you, you feel free to expand it as you need to and also change the scale too so this is chunked into weeks obviously we've got eight weeks each week yeah. seven days in it, and so it can get longer depending on how how um, nitty-gritty you want it to be yeah and may i ask if i were to be a client in this scenario where mm -hmm. if i was looking at this list where as a client could i add the most value and where i would i be best initially looking to be able to add into this marketing plan around an event i think um it, at the initial phase we're looking at the copy idea and brief because obviously as a client that's what we want to, we want to be able to deliver value for for what you for what you require and obviously working yeah. in tandem it's that ideation stage that really starts to add a lot of value um so in the initial phase the the asset element of it is is really coming up with the with the brief from your point of view and then we can step into the other elements. So that's then our our job to kind of interpret your brief and go right. Okay, so Martin, for your brief, we um, we think we're going to require some sort of this these elements of photography, these elements of graphics, videos. By looking at your client list, we can work out who we should speak to and how we should speak to them at what times and in what. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, we've got kind of eight weeks to our event. That our event's looming. So obviously in, in week one, at least well, at least two weeks, you really want to be cracking on with um, the brief and the idea and have that nailed. That has to be kind of done early doors because you want to make sure that that's, that's as good as you can get it um, because all the other elements are going to hang off that brief. Um, so it's, it's really, really key to do that. And as you can see, we're already getting, there's already not many weeks to our actual event. So we've got, what's that? One, two, three, four, five weeks to our event, even if we take two weeks to do the ideation stroke brief. So it might be ideal to maybe even extend this further. But this is again, the beauty of planning comes in. The beauty of planning, which sounds like a really scary thing to say, because planning and beauty don't always go together. Um, what they but, do in my world. <laughs> they do Martin you're right the beauty of planning is that in an ideal world you wouldn't just give yourself eight weeks to do an event you wouldn't just go oh we need to do an event in eight weeks time you would have these planned maybe six nine maybe even 12 months up front so you've got your year plan so that you're never really caught short going oh my oh lord we need to do an event in eight weeks time because that is that is still quite a short time period to get everything in in place so if you can have if you can have your your yearly plan where you know when these events are going to come, you can then work backwards and that gives you more time. Um, and you need to be careful. This this is also a, a, something to be aware of is that giving yourself a load of time can backfire too, because if you give yourself too much time, you can lose that sense of urgency and things don't always get pushed through because they kind of mm. get left. Um, and I don't, I don't know for, for me too much planning loses a bit, it loses a little bit of magic there's always a little bit of magic involved in any kind of event and planning and too much and too long a time periods tend to slow it all down and kill it a little bit for me but yeah. if you can just sit, kind of say right i'm going to do say four events a year and they're going to be here 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 and here then you know you can get the structure in place because as you know martin putting the structure in place can be really take, take, can take a lot of a lot of effort a lot of time yeah um so just to kind of keep running down the assets element so once you've got the copy idea brief that's when you need to kind of fill in all these other elements really 
um, because those those will all tip out. And some of these may may start to tip into a few weeks further forward because obviously getting photographers and things might take a little bit more time. Um, but some of the early elements, I think you can you can get these pushed forward quite quickly. So once you've nailed the idea in brief, it's really easy to set up an event right thing. In the, for, so for in this case, uh, we're talking about an event. So setting up event right is quite simple. You've got a copy document, you've worked out um, what you're gonna charge, uh, when it is, uh, where the event is and who it's for. It's quite a simple process to get an event right page. You can use a stock image to get that up and running and you can, get, you can start to get that pushed out while the rest of the campaign builds itself in this case. Um, so, so far, so good, Martin? Yeah, what I'm thinking as you're working through it is, as somebody who would be interested in get, uh, gauging people's own interest in the event, what overlaying at the top, what we might be expect to see happening in terms of some feedback, otherwise you're doing this in a bit of a vacuum. So, mm -hmm. for my own personal experience in the event, with three to four weeks to go, there may be some indications as to what that event might actually manifest itself as at the time. So I'm going through that personally at the moment, which is what would I expect? When when are the typical times people sign up uh, for these things? What am I doing this today, next week to in that, what is for me week four or five, I think, yeah. to, uh, use my time most productively. So it's almost yeah. putting a kind of a goal on each week of whatever yeah. that means yeah. to the individual. And that, that's yeah. where I'm thinking it doesn't need to be part of the plan because I can see why you would put the plan together to do the kind of bottom up mm -hmm. operational activity. Yeah. What I'm connecting it to is what would I expect to be happening in response feedback? Okay. Good that you're doing and obviously the entrepreneur in me wants to do things and hopefully other people will respond in the way that I want but that's not always the case. No, absolutely not no okay yeah no no that, that's that's a good point so this first element is more to kind of almost like get all your kit together so get all your we need to get the to get the idea the um the operational elements as you said the kind of event right photography graphics start to get things all pulled together so um, this is kind of, if you don't have the nuts and bolts, you can't, you can't start to do the promotion properly, which is where the next element comes in. So we've got the pre-event, which, which is in the next one down. Um, some of these things start to work as asynchronous. So they kind of work, they, is that, I don't know if that's the right term, but they kind of come at the same time. Um, so you can also, you can already kind of start on the, some of these elements once you've kind of got, once you've been starting to think about the copy brief idea, once you've got that, an inkling of an idea or, or enough of a rounded idea that you're, you're happy to start putting feelers out to speak to people, even though it might not be fully concrete. And this is where you can start to put in um, the elements like the email and uh, the outbound social. Um, blogs are probably going to come a little bit later because you're going to have to have it a little bit more formulated. And obviously, um, with your blog, you can start to embed things like the Eventbrite code in there, so that in this case, so that you can sell the tickets. Again, the social media outreach um, can start at the early stages, even while all this is still coming together. Yeah. Um, PR probably takes a little bit longer because um, that does need to be kind of solid, and you will need your graphics, videos, photography, whatever, to kind of support your PR as well. Um, and any paid ads, obviously you'll need to have things a little bit formatted before you want to start spending cash on your um, series of paid ads. But a lot of this other stuff can start the, kind of the, the, ideas, the ideation stages because you're maybe putting feelers out. So for example, Martin, you might, if you're doing an event, you might start to speak to some of your, um, some of your inner circle about, I'm doing an event, what do you, what do you think about? The, this initial idea, is it a goal? Would you be interested? How much would you pay for that? And by doing that, you're already starting to sow that kind of seed of, oh, right, Martin, so Martin's going to be doing an event. So you yeah. start to tell them about doing the event, even before you've necessarily got in all the really solid nuts and bolts in there. Yeah. And, that, 
and that's where so on, on this where, where we're saying outbound social um, the outbound social can be different elements so they can be um, kind of dark social and kind of over the top social as well so by um, over the top social I mean kind of straightforward tweets and uh, Instagram posts and LinkedIn and Facebook and all those other overt social elements but by the dark social I mean kind of direct messaging so speaking to your inner circle via um, direct messaging on uh, or LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram or wherever your kind of inner circle hang out so you can start to put feelers out about things that you might want guest speakers you might be looking for a venue and, and all these things start to highlight the fact that you're looking to do some form of event you can talk to people about it and say okay so I'm doing this an event um, is it something you're interested in could you help me out with something do you know anyone in your own circle who could help me out with that so the outbound social doesn't just cover off what people see as standard social, which is kind of a broadcast message, if you like. Um, it's that kind of one-to-one, peer-to-peer uh, -peer messaging as well. And that can actually be more, that can actually be stronger, especially when it's the early days of an, of an event where you almost need to um, person by person go and um, pick the people you want to, or you want to attract. And that does come back to the, come, that is all fed from this initial copy idea brief element um, where you've worked out who this is aimed at and from that you can then go and find these people so there is that kind of broadcast element and there's the kind of the more underground element of um, speaking to people on a one-to-one -one basis using direct messaging or meeting them down the pub or meeting them in a, in a, in a workspace or whatever um, yeah just on that point Richie also, the, yeah the little doodle that I've made in my book is that when I used to go to conferences and exhibitions, I used to meet people face to face and have that chat. And what I found was, although that was a big commitment of time and money, actually then moving them from that chat to a paid for event was relatively more easy, that's right use of grammar, than connecting with them on social, which is sometimes a lighter connection. Yeah. Therefore, what I'm finding is it allows me to get more coverage and more lighter connections, but unpicking that like or connection to a paid for event is a more difficult hop because yeah. they didn't ever meet potentially, they've not physically talked to you about it. So mm -hmm. I think the answer to that is to not underestimate the difference between a like connection on social that a lot of these activities would create mm -hmm. and their willingness to commit to an event if indeed it is paid for yep. that's what that's what i'm learning and i would want this kind of plan to in any way recognize that difficulty in that level of commitment that is quite required to physically turn up in a place and yeah. part with money no I, I, yeah absolutely because it, it, it's if you when you think about it, if it especially if it is a paid event it's a commitment it's not just oh i might just turn up and have a chat i've got to get my credit card out or i've got to get my cash out or whatever i've got to do it, it is yeah. it is a commitment so i think and the, the good thing reflecting back now on, on this sheet that I've, that I've that i've created where i put outbound social that can also mean face-to-face -face social there's no reason why this is not just because we're a digital agency this is what we do it doesn't mean that all these elements are just all digital um the outbound social is, like you said, being in a place, going out to, to going out and networking and talking to people yeah. about the event as well, because you're building up that connection. The stronger a connection you can build up, the more likely they are to trust you and, and come through all these elements. Um, so yeah, you, you're absolutely right. The element of face-to-face of -face connection is really, really key. Um, and the more people can do that, the better. And I know it's not, not everyone's necessarily suited to that, uh, but it is that thing of people buy from people and if they know you, and then they're more connected then it'll, it'll, it, it could work it could work a lot better um so yeah. the, so the, the elements in the kind of a pre-event i've only put one email in here but equally you could you could add that in um make these more emails um for this particular event and when i say emails in here i don't necessarily mean necessarily again mean that they're all kind of mass emails using mailchimp or campaign monitor or whatever um these could be personal emails. So kind of one-to-one one, one -one emails again. So it's that mix of um, broadcast where you need volume and that kind of direct, that direct touch. It needs a lot of commitment, but that's the reason for the planning is that you need all that commitment. 
Um, again, with, with a blog element of that, it may be that one blog is not enough for it. Um, and again, when I say blog, we're also, we're also looking at blog stroke kind of uh, page on the website as well. So it can be, it can be either. But there's, there's definitely a commitment to what's required. And even with up front here, so we, we put in videos, these could be several videos. So um, it could be that you're needing to talk about things as they're going, as they're going through. So you might do more kind of off the cuff videos and more, more, but more or more uh, prepared videos as well. So it's that, it's that mix of, of elements that you're going to need. Uh, but you can see already we've got lots of squares in there. There's, there's lots of moving parts all over. And actually I'm just going to fill in the social media because that, that must, mm. that's going to be a, a continuous thing. You need to be really hitting that all, yeah. all the time. I think while, whilst you're doing that, what, what strikes me and it's very uh, topical for me at the moment, which is there'll be value in the content that's been used for this. And as we know, to leave the best out of whatever you've got in any respect, there are other benefits. So for instance, if I were to be putting an, an e-learning platform alongside, or if anyone else was, then the content that you would cover at the physical event could not be too far from content that you would use to stand up a absolutely learning and irrespective of the attendance and success of that event physically by trying to extract out other value that might be a useful way of looking at it to to just make sense of all of those you've got however many cells colored in there let's say 20 and one event box so you're putting in a lot of effort which yep. will have value in itself for not just that one red box yeah, no. even if it's just clarity, clarity of thinking no I, I, absolutely absolutely and and that's the, the other reason the other key element for planning as well is, is once you've decided to do this event it, it, it you look at the event and you work out well is all this effort going to be worth so is the is the event sorry put it the other way around is the event worth all the effort we put in um, because it's easy to go, yeah, we'll do an event and then somebody go, but do you know, to make it really fly, we're going to have to put all this, all this effort in. And if the, if the perceived outcome of the event isn't worth the effort, then you need to look at what, why you're doing the event or maybe change the event. So I think that's, again, another, a key part of planning is, is this going to be, is, is this going to be worth, are we expecting to make the return from doing this event that we require and return by return? I don't necessarily mean, it doesn't necessarily mean monetary value. It could be reputational, it could be to, to further something else on. So you might not be actually making money out of this specific event. Um, but it's key to understanding that is that is the effort put in worth the means? Is the end worth the means? Yeah. Okay, so so to look at looking at the kind of the once we've got the once we got the event, what what's kind of missing off this chart, and I'll, I'll actually add it in, is um, what's gonna happen kind of while the event's happening. So need to clean up my, my Excel, Excel for some reason bleeds these colours down. So I'll just clear that clean it up a little bit. So I'm just going to put a, another line in here which is kind of live. And by live I'm going to mean what's happening actually on the day of the event. So I'll put that in as a, a nice purple colour. So on the event it's also around um, other things that, that need to be involved. So um, are you going to be doing all of these other elements in and around on the day as things are going live? So are you going to be doing socials say, hi, today, today we're at the event. Are you going to kind of ensure that you're taking photography and video and that social and other elements are going out as the event's happening? Again, this can be through your planning. So if you had a range of speakers, you could be having automated social stuff going out. Um, on that day so if you've got if you've got a range of speakers you know you've got a speaker at 10 11 12 1 and 2 o'clock um you could have time social going out saying right it's 10 o'clock so bob's about to speak on whatever bob is going to speak on um and again all these elements then start to help your uh, post event uh, marketing of the event so we've got to the, we've got to the event we've done the live elements of that because that's happened and then the post element events are you're going to want to do some sort of um, roundup blog. What color should we do that? Put that on in red. 
No, we won't, because that's the event coming. Uh, one, you just do that on there. So um, you've got a, a post-event blog. You want a, some post-event PR off the back of that. So did this event, it's great. Um, your social stuff probably needs to keep running about what, what you did and, and includes including in the people who attended the event and what value they got out of that. Um, a key element of this, and this is probably something that should go out kind of, if not in the week and just, and just after the event, is, a, is some sort of feedback form. So you, all, you always want feedback on how, how, was, how was the presentation or whatever it was on this event? How did the event go? Was it value? Would you tell the people about it? Can you give us any testimonials from that as well? Um, would you rank it? Would you come again? All those are cool questions that are really, really useful that then you can use to do your, um, your post-event marketing. So one thing I always tell clients is if they're going to do an event, tell people well before you're doing the event, tell people while you're doing the event, and after it's happened, tell people what you did at the event. And this all starts to tie back up again. So again, using all the collateral you've all you've pre-created um, for the for the for your your assets and your pre-event stuff, then you do the event, and then you exercise all those for the kind of the post-event elements as well. So from there, you can start from the feedback form. You probably start to get your quotes and your stats on um, how people ranked the event and what they had to say. Um, I mean, again, part of this live element will be on the day, getting people to kind of do video testimonials on the day or, uh, or give you that feedback straight away so that you can start to use that going forward for ideally for your next event. So the events aren't just seen in a, in a vacuum. They start to build on top of each other. If, you've, if this is the first event you've ever done, you effectively have no history. So by ensuring that you've done enough to kind of collect that history and then use that for your events going forward, your events can only, the idea is that your events keep building on top of each other because you get more yeah. feedback. Um, you get more exposure by people telling other people that they went on your event and it, and it worked out really, really well. And then this from here, this is, this is the part where you, again, we've got this last line on this particular example, which is again more of that outbound social. So telling people what you did, what it happened, thanking people for coming, highlighting the fact that we learned X, Y, and Z, or that somebody came on the course um, and then subsequently learned something that subsequently helped them to adapt and, and, meet, and meet other demands or, or to, get a, to get a promotion or to invest in something or, what, or whatever they were supposed to come out of as well. Again, all this feedback um, lean, comes back to helping you plan your next event. So working out what went right, what went wrong, and how that should um, how that helps you prepare for your for your next for your next one. It, what once you start to gain to it into a rhythm, it, that's exactly what it becomes. You start with once with this planning, and then you lift this planning and adapt and change it for the next one. But you're always learning and keeping feeding that back. Yeah, it's interesting back to the scale at the top then. So my natural feel for that, if I were to be somebody running a free event on a two-weekly basis, then it's interesting you've chosen, is that eight-week? So basically you could realistically run a two-month cycle yeah. on the physical events, which feels probably about right, and it will differ for every business, but... Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and you're right. So if, if the thing is, once you get into, if if we put in that, if we just put in the top here, let let's say you've got you've got a two weekly event, and we put in here that this is the first one, and we're going to um, put in this two weekly event, and we do that. So effectively, all these all these pre predefined elements, which are which are basically, I'm just going to change the colour of week eight just so we can identify it. Just make it black. So everything that we planned in here is for this one in week eight. But effectively, if you were doing something, if you were doing some kind of event every fortnight, then these elements um, start to apply to each one, and they just mm. run concurrently. And also by um, by doing that continuous element and being that having that regularity, they start to um, your your marketing output starts to build, so that actually your event on week six actually feeds week eight and feeds week ten and week twelve, and you get a kind of a roll, and it takes a while to get that roll going. But if yeah. you but if you don't 
if you don't plan, then you can't commit to continuing this process. And you can't, and it is it's it's a bit of a pain barrier because you need to kind of get the work your way through that. Yeah, sounds good. So that cross benefit is like the second wave level of thinking about it. So there's the first level is the practical, what are you doing each week? Yeah. The maturity of that thinking is that what are the cycles and how is one cycle positively feeding another cycle? And that's actually what people might expect, particularly if your messaging is clear because it's the same way of, well, it's the same messages um, in different vessels, different devices. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So those um, that wave of elements that you've built up start to start to build that cumulative effect. So just as a really simple example, um, once you've written your blog stroke page about about the event, if you're going to then repeat that page from a search engine optimization point of view, the page that you the page or blog that you've created will start to gain more traction in the search engine because it's being found, it's been there longer. You've got a nice amount of content on that, so that by um, say if you're counting you running this type of event for a year that event page starts to be quite strong because it's had a year's worth of content a year's worth of people um, maybe sending links back to it a year's worth of promotion it's been sat there a long time you've made it stronger by continue add, adding back your videos and content and other things you've built that up a lot so actually the the longevity can really really help and that's where the planning comes in because um, if you if you just walk up and sporadically did events without doing any kind of planning, you're not going to get those long term benefits. Yeah, with you. Okay, so have you got any questions on that, Martin? No more. I've managed to weave them into uh, your session, so that's good. Will that um, template plan be available in any form to browse upon? It will, yeah. So once I've um, uploaded this video uh, and added it to the blog, I will be attaching that template. So it's it will be freely downloadable. It's just an Excel sheet. So you feel free to download it, pinch it, do whatever you want. It's not it's not highly complicated. There are no special uh, there are no special doodads in it. It's just a it's just a, a really really simple planning sheet. Yeah, sounds good. Very well, thank you. Excellent, lovely. Thanks a lot, Martin. Take care. Cheers. Bye you now. too. Bye bye. bye.